Okay, in this video, we're going to look at egress and, and specifically um, how to determine, or first of all, what is an egress um, from a rumor suite, how to determine how many egress points you need from a rumor suite, um, the location of egress points from a rumor suite, and how to calculate how wide the egress points um, need to be from a rumor suite. And so where we're going to go in the code here is your division B part three, um, section 3.3 .3 is safety within floor areas, and specifically 3313 means of aggress. So for starters, let's just take a look at, okay, what is means of aggress? What does that mean? So we're just going to go to the definition of means of aggress here. And basically, if you read this, this whole um, definition here, it, it's basically saying that any, any point of where you are in the building to get into that safe zone. So usually it would be outside, but it's not always. There's other there's other scenarios here. Um, but you know, typically at, to, the, to the point wherever you are in the building. So maybe you're sitting in an office, and you got to leave that office and run down. You know, run through your office area, exit the office, enter the corridor, and go down a stair. It's it's that entire path that you've taken. Um, you could be sitting on a toilet, maybe the same situation. You could be in a janitor room, and it could be the same situation. That's your means of egress. Now at the end here it says means of aggress includes exits and access to exits. So let's just see what is an exit exactly. An exit is that part of a means of aggress, including doorways, that leads from the floor area it serves to a separate building, an open public, an open public thoroughfare, an exterior open space, and so on and so forth. So you know, if you have a second floor of a building and um, you have a, a stair, that stair would lead you out. Um, usually that stair, if it's an exit stair, that stair would lead you, it'd be a safe zone, first of all, so you'd have a fire rating from that stair, probably from the rest of the rest of the floor area, but as well, it would lead you to um, to the open public thoroughfare or, you know, out of the building, basically. So that would be an exit, and it's part of that means of egress, so you're it's still part of that overall path of travel. Um, but but that we commonly refer to stairs in, in multi-story buildings as exit stairs. So, you know, there could be two types of stairs. You can have a convenience stair that isn't a protected zone. Um, but you can also have exit stairs, which um, basically um, are, are protected zones and on, on that path um, for your means of egress to the exterior. And now the final definition we'll take a look at here is your access to exits. Okay, so that means this is... Access to exit means that part of a means of aggress within a floor area that provides access to an exit serving the floor area. So a corridor could be um, part of that um, means of aggress. You know, it gets you to the exit stair basically in that floor area. So that would be like an example of an access to exit. So those are kind of some important definitions to, to read and digest um, and just get familiar with some of that uh, some of that language. And so we're just going to zoom ahead now back to uh, 3313 means of aggress. And basically, this section here is just um, explaining some areas in buildings that um, need to have a means of aggress out of them, so rooftops and, and places like that. So that's an important one to know. But we're going to zoom ahead here to 3315, which is egress doorways. And so when we talk about egress doorways, we're pretty much just talking about a room, or sorry, a doorway that leads from a room or a suite. And similarly to how we um, determined how many exits you require from a floor area. So the code starts off with, in the exits, if, if you go back to that video, the code starts off saying, you must have two exits. And then it goes on to say, but if you have a space that's small enough and, and your travel distance isn't too much and blah, 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 and your occupant load's low enough, then you could do one exit. Egress doorways is kind of the same. So it starts off by saying, you got to provide a minimum of two egress doorways from a suite or a room, period. But it lists these scenarios where you where you need to have two egress doorways. So, if you if you didn't exceed say 60 people, um, your area didn't go over a certain amount, and blah blah blah, then you wouldn't have to have two egress points. So you just have to review what it's saying here. You know, if you're a sprinkler building, there's a chart down here with um, maximum room or suite areas and travel distances within that suite to that egress door from the suite. Um, there's another chart for sprinkler buildings. So let's just take a look at the sprinkler building, for example. So, um, you know, if we go back, it says if you have an occupant load more than 60, you have to have two egress doorways. So that would be one thing you want to check is your occupant load. But as well, you'd have to check, say, let's just say we had an office on a, on a second floor or something like that. 
um, this is for a sprinkler building if the office area was more than um, 300 meters squared then we would have to have a um, a second egress point basically we have to have two egresses so if it, were, if it was less than 300 and as well if it was um, less than occupant load of 60 then you could just have one for example so it's kind of the same approach as, as exits is, is kind of how that works and just the other thing to note here is um, if you're looking in the, if you have a non-sprinkler building then it's not just by area and occupant load it's also um, by the travel distance within that um, suite or room to that egress doorway okay so step one is determining whether you need one egress door or two egress doors from a suite step two would be um, checking your travel distances okay so um, 3316 pretty much refers you to a another section for travel distances and again this is this is if you're not you know, using this chart over here um, you know uh, basically I think actually for the sprinkler building yeah the travel distance can't be more than 25 meters pretty much so if you're using the sprinkler building um, you can't be more than 25 meters travel distance from anywhere in that suite to that egress door so there's there's the occupant load there's still a the travel distance and there's a room area as well now that caps off at 25 meters so if, if your travel distance is greater than 25 meters but you have say a 275 square meter floor you still need two egress doors because you've exceeded one of those parameters basically um, so but it just says if you're over 25 so it's like okay well I'm, maybe I'm 30 okay is that okay though or maybe I'm 60 is that okay so when you go to travel distance it, it pretty much takes you to the um, the exit section so we'll just go there okay and then in the travel distance um, in the location of exits basically is where the travel distance is uh, you just want to make sure that you're not exceeding these um, these areas in there or these distances in there so you just need to to read through you know what is your what is your use whether you're sprinklered or not sprinklered and so on and so forth and then there's going to be a um, a certain maximum distance that um, you could travel and so just going back to the article 3316 for travel distance it just says that okay if you have to have more than one egress doorway um, then that travel distance within the room or suite to that to one of the egress doorways shall not exceed those travel distances listed in that other article basically so you, there's still maximums there basically um, and the reason you know this this is focused on um, if you have more than one egress doorway is because if you have one you've already got that limitation right so if you have one egress doorway you already have a, um, a maximum distance right there so that's kind of how that um, that article works okay so now that that pretty much covers um, you know determining your quantity of egress points from a room or suite and then your your maximum travel distances um, to that egress door from the room and suites I just want to go back to um, article 3315 egress doorways and and bring attention to this one right here so let's say you've you've got a space and you've determined that you need two egress doorways um, this article here tells you that this sentence here I should say tells you that they shall be placed the two egress doorways shall be placed at a distance from one another equal to or greater than one-third of the maximum overall diagonal dimension of an area to be served so so now you've determined that you need to have um, two egress doors but they obviously can't be right beside each other they're, they're just you know similar to exits um, it's, it's just saying okay they have to be a certain distance apart and so looking at that scenario let's just say we had a we have a suite here and maybe there's a public corridor out here like that um, you know basically what this is saying is that if you had uh, say a door over here like so by the way that door swing is dependent on occupant load as well if you read through this section if you determine though that you needed that second egress door out of this space then um, if, if this diagonal dimension here let's just say was 30 meters then that distance from there to there needs to be 10 meters from door to door okay and just going back to the article here so um, the doors the egress door shall be placed at a distance from one another equal to or greater than one-third the maximum overall 
diagonal dimensions. So, so those would have to be at least 10 meters apart. They could be farther if they wanted. Okay, so we've looked at the quantity, the location, and now let's take a look at the width required of these egress doors. So I'll just go to section 3319 here and point out that um, corridors have a minimum, public corridors have a minimum width of 1100. Make sure you read the, the definition of public corridor too, because basically the, you know, a corridor within a suite um, wouldn't necessarily um, apply to this. This is more like the public corridor that a bunch of suites are sharing basically. And just moving ahead here, if you want the minimum width of a egress door, uh, it's in 33113 right here, and it gives a minimum width of an egress door. But we're not done there, so that's the minimum width. So the egress widths, so whether it's a door or a corridor or whatever, have to be calculated based on the occupant load. So we're going to jump ahead to 33117 to take a look at this. And sentence one just tells you that right away. So the capacity of an accessed exit shall be based on the occupant load of the portion of the floor area served. So part of that accessed exit could be that corridor. Um, and it, it would be the door as well, the egress door. And then it goes on to say um, that if, you know, if, if the asset accessed exit um, has a slope of not more than one in eight, or if it's a doorway, or a corridor, it shall be based on not less than 6.1 millimeters per person. So all you're doing is you're, occupying, you're multiplying that occupant load by 6.1 to figure out how wide these things have to be. And then furthermore in here, it just you know, talks about if you have a ramp with a slope more than one and eight, then it's based on a different number right here. And there's some other sentences there, uh, but by and large, it'll usually be the 6.1 here, but be sure to read through the rest of that, to see if they apply to you. And so all we're doing in this case is, let's just say for whatever reason, we have um, 400 people in this space right here. So, you know, we're over the, the occupant load of 60 at that point. So we leave, need at least um, two egress stories out of this space. So if we had 400 people in there, I've just drawn in the, um, the two egress doorways. So 400 times 6.1 is, 24 40 millimeters so what that article is saying is that the the amount of the width of egress door is required here and here needs to equal 2440 based on occupant load so you know to do that um, a door let's just say you did 900 wide doors that's pretty normal size so you have 900 and 900 so now you're only 1800 Okay, so so really what you do is you just keep adding doors until you can reach that reach or exceed that 2440. So if you just take 2440 and divide it by say a 900 wide door leaf, you get 2.7. So what you could do in this case is just add a double door. You could add a, I mean, you could add a, um, a, a third egress door, I suppose, to get that accumulative egress width, or you could just add a door leaf um, to one of the doors, right? So if we just did this and said our door was like that now, um, now 900 times three, so that's a 900 door, and that's an 1800 door, right? So 1800 plus 900 is 2700. So you, now you would exceed that 2700 um, egress width exceeds the um, 400 times 6.1, whatever that was, 400 times 6.1 ex exceeds the uh, 22, 2440, sorry. So you'd be okay in meeting that requirement of that article.